time of my year. This was a gift given to me yesterday. Praise God for that. And uh, I like it a lot better, but I got to make sure. Can y'all hear it good? Because I got it down on my collar. If I turn, do this and holler, we're going to be in trouble. I try to stay, uh, keep my, try to keep my head up, Rick. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you what, uh, God is wonderful. God is awesome. Amen. I want you, if you would, please stand on your feet. We're going to get right into this word, uh, what God has put in my spirit. Because I've been wrestling with the Lord again. I said, Lord, I really feel like I need to preach this at Jubilee Baptist Church. But I feel like God wants us to hear it here. Maybe this is a good, uh, I don't know. We'll just see. May preach it again over there if God says fit. We will. Amen. Let's dismiss children for Children's Church. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our children. Y'all, if there's any children, you got to about forget about that sometimes. Hallelujah. Y'all, this uh, we thank God for our children. I'm about to get some feedback. You may have to cut it down just a hair. Y'all hear a little bit of feedback? Praise God. Diane's from my shoes. This number up here shouting. Y'all. Praise God. Can't miss them. Y'all can see them. I mean, I can see them, but y'all can't. Praise the Lord. They let me know when I ain't doing something right. Praise God. Y'all want you to open up to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I want to give you just one bit of scripture here. And uh, then we're going to preach this thing, what God's put in my spirit. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says this, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Father, we thank you right now for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. You are the creator. You are everything. Lord, without you, we are nothing. Lord, we've come to praise you today, to worship you, to glorify you. Lord, there is none like you. Lord, I thank you for the praise and worship here today. I thank you for your mighty power, your mighty strength. Father, I ask that you would anoint this vessel. Use me for your glory. Touch every heart, every soul. Lord, God, prepare the hearts right now to receive your word. And Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor in this house of worship. And everybody says, Amen. Let's give God a big old clap for Come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Whew, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You can be seated. Praise God. Well, y'all going to have to shout a little bit louder. Y'all going to have to clap a little bit louder because we got a lot of people out. Amen. Got to get amen up in here. Got a lot of people. So you got to shout. You got to holler. You got to give God the praise. Amen. I love it. I told you, I was used to uh, speaking and, and preaching in an all black church. My Lord. I mean, it's wonderful because black people know how to praise the Lord. Amen. Why people get in here? Why people, they just think everybody's looking at them. Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody looking at you so you can get your praise on. Amen. It don't really matter if they are looking. It don't matter no way. Come on, y'all. We can praise the Lord. There's liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come on. you got to get Amen up in here. God is awesome and God is good. I want you to, I want to talk to you today about the sixth day of creation. Everybody say the sixth day of creation. We're going to look at that sixth day and what God did on the sixth day of creation. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 26. I want to give you this and look at verse 26. This is what God said. We don't believe in evolution. We don't believe that man has evolved. Somebody help me. My uncle ain't no monkey. My aunt ain't no monkey. Come on, y'all. God created man. And we know that by the word of God because we believe that this Bible is the word of God. Can I get amen? This is God's word. Chapter 1, verse 26. God said it. God said, let us, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image after our likeness. This is what God has spoken. Then he said this, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so what did he do? The verse 27 says, so God created man what? In his own image. Think about that. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Then he says what? Male and female created he them. This is on the sixth day, which happens to be on a Friday. And then God blessed them. And here's what he said to them. He said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, behold, I've given you every green, every herb, bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the seed which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. I want to talk to you a little bit. Let me go just a little bit further read all this and then we're going to preach a little bit. And to every beast of the field and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life 
I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. There was a time men didn't eat meat, uh, animals, okay? They ate green herbs, what God had produced, what God had, had, had to grow. And then God said, saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. It's amazing. He said it was very good when God created man, and he created woman. And the evening and the morning were the what? Sixth day. I want to talk to you today about the sixth day of creation. It was on the sixth day that God created man, and he created man in what? His own image. This is so important because I love to preach. I love to sh sh shout and to holler. There's times we've got to get the word, amen. I, I, gotta, I said, Lord, help me to teach sometimes instead of preach and holler so much. But it was on the sixth day God created man. He created man in his own image. And he named him Adam. Thank you, Jeremy. Praise God. He named the man Adam. The sixth day was the day of man's creation. God caused man, watch this, God caused a man, Adam, to bear his image. And it was an image of glory and perfection. I'm realizing that. It was, a, it was an image of glory and perfection. That's how he made man. It all happened on a Friday on the sixth day of creation. Now, about 4,000 years later, somewhere along that time frame, when Messiah came, when Jesus came to this earth, the Lamb of God, our Redeemer, our sacrifice, something unheard of happened. See, it was again on the sixth day. It was a Friday. And it's found, oh Lord, i got to read something. Y'all, it's found in Matthew. It's found in Matthew chapter 27. I want to read you some of this. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. This is about 4,000 years ago after God had done created the first Adam in his image. Here comes Jesus. And it says here, on the, it's on a Friday. It says the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, gathered him into the whole hand of soldiers. And here's what they did, y'all. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe on him. They put a thorn of, of crowns on his head. They put a reed in his hand. They, they bowed the knee before him. They were mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. This is what men are doing to Jesus. This is on the sixth day. This is on the, that same day, that Friday, that, that, man, that God had created man in his image. And they spit on him. In verse 30, and, and, the, and the reed, they took that reed down and popped him and smote him in the head, hit him in the head with it. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and they put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. As they came out, they found a man of Simon by name. Him, they compelled to bear his cross because the cross got too heavy, he couldn't, he couldn't carry it. Now I want you to think about this a little bit. It says, when they were coming to the place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. When he had tasted thereof, he would not drink it. Then they did what? They crucified him, parted his garments, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and put my vesture. Did they cast lots? It's found in Psalms 22, 18. Exactly what God said would happen. It's 4,000 years ago. Here's Jesus. What's going on? He's dying on a cross. It's the sixth day. It's the day of his death. It's the day... That Jesus was arrested, he was beaten, he was bound, he was scourged, he was abused, he was mocked, he was humiliated, he was degraded, he was stripped and naked, y'all, you know, he was nailed to a cross. He was put on display as a blasphemer, as a criminal, cursed of God, judged guilty and condemned to death. On the very same day, on a Friday, on the sixth day that God had created man in his own image, here we got Jesus dying on the cross, being humiliated. It's the day that God had made man in his own image. Now, look at it, y'all. It's all happening, but it's happening in reverse. I want you to think about this. Think about what's happening on another Friday, on the sixth day. It's all happening in reverse reverse the very day that God has taken on watch this y'all God Jesus is now taking on the very image of man God is now
taking the image of man. God had created man in His own image. And now Jesus is taking the image of man upon Himself. All the sin, everything that man has been guilty of, Jesus is taking it on the cross. Jesus, the Lord, is bearing the image of fallen man as one who has fallen, as one found guilty, as one cast out. Jesus is judged as a blasphemer because blasphemy was the sin of man. We've all blasphemed against God. We've all fall short of God's glory. We're all, we've all f- fell short. We're all sinned. We've all messed up. And now Jesus has taken on the image of man as one who has transgressed the law. He's under judgment. He's condemned to death. He's cursed and he's separated from God. See, when you really look at the cross... We are beholding the Son of God who is now bearing the image of man. It's all in reverse now. Now I want you to think about this. I want you to get this in your spirit because this is what the Lord has done for us. Why did God allow it? Why did God allow His only begotten Son, the Messiah Jesus, why did He allow Him to die to be humiliated, to be degraded? Why did He allow Himself? Why did Jesus allow Himself to be abused? And to be disgraded, to be discarded, to be to, to face death. God allowed himself to bear the image of man so that man might again bear the image of God. Amen. Somebody help me up in here. If Jesus hadn't done it, we'd never be able to bear the image of the, of, the, of the one we were created by. God created us in his image. Come on, church. He created us in his image. And the image got dis- it got smart. It got messed up. Amen. And Jesus came to pay that price. He took your image. He took my image so that we, if we were going to accept what Jesus, so that we could again begin to bear the image of God. People are not bearing the image of God today, y'all, if they're not saved and born again, filled with the Spirit. Somebody help me up in here. You've got to be cleansed by the blood. You've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. The only way you can bear the image of God is to know Jesus because He is the image of our Almighty God. Jesus is God. He's Emmanuel. The only way to bear His image, y'all, is to know Jesus and Him lifted up. He, today, men and women, God's image that Adam lost, Jesus paid the price and He he brought it back. Oh, church, we're going somewhere today. I hope y'all are ready. Good Lord. Jesus allowed Himself to bear the image of fallen man So that man may again bear the image of a risen Savior. We don't serve a dead Savior. The image we produce now is a risen Savior. We are every born again Christian. We ought to be full of life. Y'all come on. Somebody help me. We ought to be full of life. The world ought to see a difference when they look at men and women of God. They ought to see the image of God radiating out of our body. They ought to see the love. They ought to see the grace. They ought to see the mercy radiating from our bodies. Because we are created and made now in the image of God. Because of what Jesus has done for us. Because of Christ he's paid for us. Because he shed his blood. He filled us with the spirit of the living God. And now we're bearing the image of God to a world that's dying and going to hell. Amen. Come on, church. Somebody help me. I ain't trying to be like somebody else. I'm not trying to be like T.D. Jakes. I'm not trying to be like Rod Parson. I'm not trying to be like Billy Graham. I'm trying to be like that Lord and Savior, the Messiah, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Oh, Lord God, I want to be like you, Father. I want to be like And God says, if you want to be like me, get to know my son. Get to know Jesus. Get to know the Messiah. And then you can begin to be like me. And then you can bear my image on this earth because that's what Jesus did, y'all. He bore the image of God. Amen. To a fallen man who was dead and dying and going to hell. Every one of us right now would be dying and going to hell if it were not for Jesus. Somebody help me up in here. Ain't nobody in here good enough to do anything for God. Can't even stand in his presence without his without the blood of Jesus. So let us make our life a reflection of his life. Let our nature be a reflection of of his nature. Yo, I'm trying, I'm tired of seeing people's own nature rise up. Somebody's gonna hurt your feelings, somebody's gonna make you mad. Get over it and let God's nature flow forth through you. Begin to bear God's image. Come on, somebody help me up in here. We need to be a reflection of God's nature in a world that's trying to see somebody or someone who is different. Let our works be a reflection of his works. 
Let our hearts be a reflection of his heart. How does he feel about sinful people? How does he feel about people dying and going to hell? It breaks his heart, y'all. Come on. It ought to be breaking our heart when we find out that somebody didn't know the Lord, that somebody wasn't saved, wasn't born again. It ought to break our hearts like it breaks God's heart when people reject him. Come on, church. We gotta get a we gotta get a compassion for people. We gotta get a compassion for those who don't know the Lord. We gotta get a compassion for the youth, for the children, for every soul. Everybody, come on, you got to get some compassion for that soul that's sitting right beside you. Come on, you got to get some compassion for the person that's sitting in here right now. We got to have compassion, y'all, for those that are dying and going to hell. Lord, give us compassion for souls that don't know you. Good Lord, somebody help me up in here. We got to let us allow Him to form us into His image. Amen. Come on, y'all. God did it one time where he took the image of man. He ain't doing it again. Right. Amen. Can I get an amen up in here? I used to portray an image that was pretty bad. In fact, it was awful. It was the wrong kind of image. But now that I've been saved and born again, there's another image that radiates from me. And there ought to be another image that's radiating for every one of us who know Jesus. See, you, we got to do better than what we do. Come on, church. We got to have more mercy than this world has. We got to have more grace than this world has. We got to have more love than this world has. We got to be a reflection of who God really is. Come on, are we really in His image or are we not? Somebody help me up in here. We're representing God Almighty. We're representing God in our lives. Woo, we got quiet on that. We're talking about His image radiating through us. And all of this, y'all, just think about this. Jesus bore your image in His death, so let us bear His image in this life. As we live, let's bear His image to a world who don't know Jesus. See, it all happened on the sixth day. It all happened on a Friday. But as I begin to study this message God was giving me, He said, Son, that ain't all I did on a Friday. If that weren't enough, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? I think it's pretty awesome what God did on a Friday on the sixth day, but the Bible says, as we were reading, we got to go back, I want to show you something. See, that's not all that happened on the sixth day of creation. God also created a female. Oh, there it is. What's going on? I think my battery's about to die, brother, because my light went out. But if it does, it does. I'll have to get that handheld mic, which I don't like to do. But that's not all that happened on the day, y'all. God also created a female. Genesis 1, 27 and 28 again. I want to read it again. It says God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female, he created him. Some of you guys are praising Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to hold this hand up. He doesn't know how to matter. Watch this, y'all. And then it says 28, God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful. Now watch this. He said, he's talking to them, but he's really talking to the female. Because the female is the one who has the babies. Somebody help me up in here. It's Eve who has the babies. Can't no male have no baby. That's why it's two men and not, come on, I mean, it's one man and one woman. It's one man and one woman because the woman has the baby. Come on, the man plants the seed, the woman has the baby. Give me a, give the Lord, someone help me up in here. That's another story for another time, but watch this. God blessed them, said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, sea, over the fowl of the air, over everything, living thing that moves upon the earth. So he told the woman, be, be fruitful. Now watch this. He's talking about the woman. Genesis 2.18. Let me get back to Genesis. i got to show you something here. Man, God give me something. I got so excited. I was about to explode. Praise God. I'm about to explode right now before I can even say it. But Genesis chapter 2, look at verse 18. God said this. This is what God said. He said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I'm going to make him a help me for him. 
it ain't good for a man to be alone. Roy, ain't you glad it ain't good for us to be alone, brother? You got your woman right there beside you. Praise God, I got a woman beside me. It's not good for a man to be alone. So God made a help made for him. He made somebody that would help him. Amen. Let me tell y'all, us men need some help. Yes. I need some help. Somebody help me up in here. I need some help from this woman. I got praise God. I'm so glad God brought her to me or I found her. Praise the Lord. Because this old boy needed some help. Y'all just hang in there for a minute, okay? But we all need help. Somebody help me up in here. And it said, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and he brought them unto Adam so that he would call them, and so that he would name them, call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, guess what? That was the name thereof. And then Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmate for him. And verse 21 says that God... Boy, this is going to be some awesome stuff, y'all. I hope y'all ready. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And guess what he did? He slept. And God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman. Ooh, bread, God. Man, I thank God for a woman. Woo! That one right there named Dana. And he brought her unto the man. Now watch this. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and they shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be what? One flesh. But here's the verse that really got me. Verse, chapter 3, verse 20. Genesis chapter 3 verse 20. Because see, remember Adam had done name to every animal. Remember this is the sixth day. This is on a Friday. Watch this. And, God, and Adam called his wife's name. This is Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife's name, y'all say it, Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. I got news for y'all. All of us are kin, whether you like it or not. Some people got an issue when it comes to black, white, green, red, yellow, blue. But you better be you better know what that Bible says. The Bible says Eve is the mother of all living. Amen. Every one of us in here are kin. Amen. All of us got the same blood flowing through us. Amen. Come on, somebody we all look different. Some are darker, some are lighter, some are redder. Somebody have up in here. But we all got the same mama. Her name is Eve. But guess what? I gotta tell you this. Guess what the Hebrew name for Eve is? Let me give it to you. It's K H A V A H. K H A V A H. Kava. Kava. You know what Kava means? This is Eve's name, Kava. It means life giver. Life giver. It's, it's, let me get it right. It's K H A V A H. Some translations will start it out with a C instead of a K, okay, with a C. But it's Kava. Kava means, the Hebrew name for Eve is Kava, which means life giver. So that tells us that Eve is what? The life giver. In other words, when God told her to, to replenish, to produce, to be fruitful, it's Eve who does what? Brings forth life. She has what? She has babies. Are y'all still with me? I said, Lord, please help me to get this thing down so we can understand where God wants to go with this. So she's the life, her name is the life giver. She, she gives forth, she, she, she has babies, she gives birth. She was created, y'all, to be Adam's helpmate, to help him in the garden and to be his companion, to be fruitful and to multiply. But what happened? Adam fell. Now think about this. Yes, she fell too. Adam fell and it took what we talked about a while ago it took the second Adam it took the Messiah it took Jesus to come back and to undo his fall or to bring redemption back to fallen man yes. amen how many realize the Bible talks about Jesus as being what the second Adam yes. y'all here with me y'all listening we're getting in our spirit now watch this because it, this is just a day of teaching. I'm not really going to preach. I've got to teach this thing so we can understand and get it in our spirit. So here is a question. If 
Jesus is the second Adam. Who is the second Eve? Ooh, you're right, brother. Hallelujah. Come on. Jeremy's already got it. Think about this for you. Eve, okay. Adam is the first Adam. We got the second Adam, Jesus. Eve is the first woman. He, she's the first one. So what I'm saying, who is the second? Think about this. And Jeremy's right. Who is the second Eve? Who is the second one who is supposed to be given birth or being fruitful and multiplying? Oh, Lord, help me up in here, right here. You've got to get this in your spirit. Here, here it is, y'all. Remember, God caused what? A deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Now, when he did, how many know sleep is a symbol of death? So we could say that Adam's sitting there dead. It's a symbol of death, okay? So what did Jesus do? When, 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 what did Jesus do, y'all? Jesus fell into a sleep. In other words, he died on the cross. Amen? You remember when he died on the cross? Jesus died. Adam died. God took a rib out, made a woman. Now, through his death, through the death of Jesus, guess what? Because of his death, many are born. Now, many are born again. Think about this. How was Eve, or how was, and I like to say Kava, Kava, how was Eve born? She was born through the opening of the, of the side of, of Adam. God reached in his side. Amen? took out a rib well guess what happened with Jesus when he was on a cross y'all out of his side they popped that spear right up into his side it went into his heart out of his side flowed blood and water out of his side God was birthing Adam had a bride and Jesus has a bride <laughs> come on Adam had a bride y'all come on Jesus has a bride See, whether you know or not, you are that second Eve. Somebody help me up in here. See, think about it, y'all. So with Jesus, his side was opened, his side was pierced, and what birth of what came forth was the church. Every born again believer would come forth from the side of Jesus. And what, is, what did Adam do with his bride? He loved that beautiful one. Oh, Dana. He loved that I believe she was right there with him all the time. Adam and Eve in the garden. In fact, when the serpent came in, you know, Adam was right there too. Come on. He could have stood, but he fell. He fell. He fell. Somebody help me up in here. It was his fault. He did it. But what I'm trying to tell you, as much as Adam loved that bride of his, as much as he loved Eve, it ain't nothing compared to how Jesus loves his bride. Somebody help me up in here. It ain't nothing. My love for this woman ain't nothing compared to how Jesus loves his bride and what he did and, and the price he paid. He, he laid his life down. He shed his blood. He hung on the cross. Hallelujah. Come on, church. You were birthed out of the, out of the side of Jesus. And I mean, you're right there under his arm. He's right there with you. When he says he'll never leave or forsake you, it's true. He will not. What is the church? Y'all were the bride of Jesus, his kava, his life giver. Now watch this. Here's a, here's a gold nugget. You need to get this in your spirit. We were born again to be what? To be life givers, the helpmate of Jesus, to assist him in accomplishing his work and his purpose on this earth. God didn't save you just so you can look funny. He didn't save you so you can just sit down on a pew and look so good. Come on. He saved you that you could do something. He saved you so you could be fruitful and multiply. He saved you so we ought to be, come on, y'all. We ought to be producing other Christians in our life. We ought to be producing some people who love the Lord. Come on. Get the Lord. We're out of the sign of Jesus. We're his bride. We're here to be a witness, to be a testimony, to be fruitful, to multiply. Amen. Getting other people saved and born again, coming to know the Lord. We were born to be kava, to be helpmates of Jesus, to assist Him in accomplishing His work and His purpose. To be fruitful, multiply. Are you ready for this? Amen. It was Eve, Adam's wife, Eve, who bore Adam's children in this world. So it is written, the second Kava, the born again ones who bring forth God's love and life, His very image into this world. Y'all, the image has been restored through Jesus. We've been birthed from His side. The only Jesus, the only image of God that people are going to see today is going to be in you. Amen. 
Come on, somebody help me up in here. That's why it is important how we act and the things we do. It is important that we line up with what God says in His Word. It is important that we don't twist God's Word to fit our own lifestyle, but we, our lifestyle fits to His standards and what He's called us to be. Come on, church. It's time for us to bear God's image. Does God, does God really act like that? Oh, let me say that one more time. I've seen some Christians act pretty bad sometimes. I've seen some Christians do some crazy things. Is that portraying God's image? Somebody help me up in here. We ain't got no right, y'all, to portray our own image. We ain't got no right to do what the world does. We ain't got no right to live our life any old way we want to live it. We have got to bear God's image because He restored it in every one of His children. Hallelujah. He bared His image in us, y'all. We're cleansed by His blood, filled with the Spirit. We are bearing the image of God to a world that's dying and going to Can I get an amen up in here? Come on, church, we're almost through. This is what God has done. We are His life givers, His helpmates. We bear the life of God into this sinful world. We bring forth fruit and we multiply. That's why God said the tree is known by what? The word don't say that a tree is known by the leaves it has on it. A tree's not known by the bark that surrounds it. A tree's not known by the roots deep into the ground. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. If it's an apple tree, guess what? It's going to have apples on it. If it's an orange tree, it's going to have apples on it. If it's a lemon tree, it's going to have lemons on it. Let me tell you something. If you are a man or woman of righteousness, if you're a tree of God, if you've been purchased with a price, if you're cleansed by the blood, if you're filled with the Spirit, let me tell you, you're going to bear some fruit. And that fruit's going to be the fruit of the Spirit. Somebody help me up in here. You're going to bear the fruit of the Spirit that's on the inside of you. The problem is, some people got the wrong kind of spirit. Some people ain't got the Holy Spirit. That's why they bear what they bear. Come on. Somebody give me an amen or OB or something. We bear the fruit of the Spirit that's on the inside of us. Good Lord. If you've been saved and born again, you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you. You are the temple of a living God. And there's something you bear. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance. Come on, y'all. All the fruit of the Spirit we bear in our lives. A tree is known by the fruit. It's not known by what it says. It's known by what it bears. A lot of people claim this and claim that. A lot of people say this and say that. Boy, a lot of people say a lot of stuff. A lot of people come to the preacher and say, you need to do this. Oh, really? Well, why don't you do it? God put it in your heart. Why don't you do it? People want the preacher to do everything. God, people want the preacher to do this, do that, do everything. They come up with all these ideas. Oh, it would be better if we did this. If it would be better than this, you do it then. Amen. Somebody help me up in here. Amen. Come on. God put it in your spirit or not. Do it. Y'all, we've got to learn to do is to do what God says. You're going to bear His image, we've got to do something. Amen. Amen. We're doing something around here. We're reaching people. Getting souls saved. We're feeding people. Amen. We're doing something with what God has given us. We're bearing His image. God said you'll always have the poor. We've never looked down on the poor. Anybody looks down on the poor, you better get your heart right because something's wrong somewhere. You're too full of pride. Come on. We help the poor. We put a hand down. We help a brother or sister who has fallen. We extend grace. We extend mercy. That's one thing that's missing. I think in the church's day is grace and mercy because somebody don't look exactly the way we look. We don't even want them in the church. Somebody help me up in here. I'm so glad it's not like that up in here. We don't all have to look alike. Come on. We don't have to dress alike. We don't have to look alike. We don't have to be fat, skinny. It don't matter what you are. Red, yellow, blue, green, or white. It don't really matter. We're going to love you anyway. I told everybody, we're going to love people into the kingdom. Can I get an amen up in here? We're going to love till the devil can't stand it no more. We're going to love till the devil, he just can't stand it. We're going to love people because people ain't your enemy. Come on, y'all. The devil's your enemy. It's the devil that's got a hold of somebody. It's the devil who's tricking somebody. It's the devil who's our enemy and not people. People are just deceived a lot of times. So it's the fruit we bear that shows what kind of tree we really are. The first Adam had a bride, y'all. 
Her name was Eve. Hava. The second Adam, Jesus, has a bride. Her name's the church. Amen. The life givers. What are we doing as a church, y'all? What do people, people say when they look at you? What do they say when they look at me? What do people say when they see this Living Branch Ministries we call Living Branch? Do they really see a living branch? Or a dead twig? Come on, somebody in there. Do people really see a living branch or do they see a dead twig? My prayer is they see a living branch. A branch that is alive. A branch that is producing fruit. A, a branch that actually really does love people the way God loved us. Y'all, I never deserved God's love. I never deserved nothing in my life. I never deserved God to get me out of that mess I was in. I never deserved anything. But God loved me so much, He did it anyway. He loved you so much, He did it anyway. He loved you so much, He brought you over here to live in branch ministry. He loved you so much, He brought you out of jail. He loved you so much. Come on. He loved you so much, church. He loved you so much, He paid a price that only He could pay. And He birthed us out of His side. I love the story by the side because see, when, when, when God brought forth Eve from the side of Adam, He didn't bring Eve out of His feet or out of His head. He did it out of the side so they could do what? So they could, come here baby, we got a wall. So they could walk side by side. Men, if you married up in here, you ain't supposed to be trampling on that woman. And women, if you married in here, you ain't supposed to be ruling over that man. Amen. You walk together. Amen. Side by side. You listen to this woman. She's a helpmate. When she's, when she's hearing from God, she's telling you what God said. Men, you don't listen to her if she's contrary to what God says. It tries to get you to go contrary to the Word of God. Amen. That's where men have a real hard battle. They don't want to be the spiritual leader of the house. Now think about that. God said, Adam, you're the spiritual leader of that house. I'm holding you responsible. See, it wasn't when Eve sinned, it was Adam sinned that God passed judgment. Amen. Let me tell you about that second Adam, y'all. Think about this for a minute. He took us from his side to walk with him. He ain't going to trample over you. But let me tell you this. You ain't going to rule over him either. Amen. Y'all stand up. I'm about through. Stand up on your feet. Let me say it one more time. He ain't going to trample on you, but you ain't going to rule over him. I don't care what two-legged man or two-legged woman thinks there's something in the church. Let me tell you, all we are are under shepherds, period. That is it. We have a great shepherd. His name is Jesus. He's the head of the church. Always has been, always will be. Not no two-legged man, not no two-legged woman. He's just called people to be in positions. That's the problem today. Everybody gets about themselves. I, I, I. Me, me, me. Let me tell you something. I can't preach without Him. I can't talk without Him. I can't move without Him. I need the Lord. Hallelujah. I need the Spirit of God. I need the presence of the Lord. But He is the head of His body. He is the head of this church. His church. And He wants us to walk side by side with Him. He wants us to bear the image of the Almighty God, the Father, to this earth, y'all. To people who... Only Jesus, only God, the only Father they're going to see is going to be through us. What kind of men or women are we being, church? This is a challenge. This is a, this is a challenging message. But are we really bearing the image of God? As much as we could, as good as we could. See, I, I think sometimes, and me, myself, I'm kidding myself, we don't understand how critical it is sometimes. You know, sometimes I believe there's a soul in the balance. Amen. And if they could just see some godly man or woman that would bear God's image and not get tore up and not get so messed up and get so mad, if they could just see something real, maybe that's what they needed to change their life. To get where they need to get. Yeah, we're bearing God's image. I'm saying, Lord, help us. Help this church. Help Living Branch Ministries. Everything we do, y'all. Everything we do, every person who comes here on Saturday, y'all, we're bearing God's image. Does it get hard sometimes? Yes. Do you get tired sometimes? Yes. But just because we get tired and wore out and, and just think we can't make it no more, does that give us a right to act crazy on some people? We're bearing the image of God. 
We want people to see the Lord in us. See His goodness. See His grace. See His mercy. See that they can make a church. You've never gone too far where God can't change you and get you out and help you. When somebody, when somebody does something I'm not really crazy about, I don't like. You know what immediately I do? I think about my own life before I got to know Jesus. I got to see how crazy and stupid and ignorant I was. Because a lot of people do things out of ignorance. They don't know no better. People do things because they can't help it. They don't have no power. They ain't got the presence of God. They ain't got the Spirit of God. But you and me, we got no excuse. We got the presence of God. We got the Spirit of God in us, y'all. And we're setting that example. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I thank you right now.